So today I'm gonna to go over how I built my off-grid water system that you see behind me here on my property. Now, I'm in Texas, uh, Central Texas, so depending on where you're at in the world, your cost could be different because my well is extremely deep in comparison to a lot of places uh, in the US and around the world. And I'll go into the cost at the end of this video so you can see exactly what I spent on it. Now, when most people think of an off-grid water system, they think of rainwater collection. And while I'm all for those type of systems, I do like those type of systems. Where I'm at in Texas, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me um, because we can go three, four months without getting any rain at all. So unless you have enough money to get a massive amount of rainwater storage tanks, um, like behind me, you can see I've got three, three 3,000 gallon tanks for a total of 9,000 gallons. Um, and that is not a lot when it comes to, if you're watering a garden, I mean, you really need 30, 60, 90,000 gallons if you really want to go off grid. Um, you could probably hear my uh, high water pressure pump right now pressurizing our system, um, which I'll get, I'll get into that here shortly. So where I'm at in Texas, we get an average of about, I believe, 47 inches of rain per year. But the problem with that, now in regards to the average, the average uh, city in the U.S., if you take an average of all the cities in the U.S., the average is about like 21 inches of rain per year. So I'm almost, I'm double that. But the problem is we get all of our rain in buckets so we can get flooding rain where unless you have a hundred thousand gallons of storage you're going to be wasting all that water once your tanks get full so rainwater collection wasn't really a good it didn't seem like a good fit for me anyways now it may be for you and i'll go into detail in this video as to why it wasn't that good of a solution for me now my wife and i do have uh, friends that have a rainwater system and they do love it for a lot of the a lot of the year but when it comes to that dry season they have to truck water in. And the problem is they have to truck in water at 2000 gallons is like the most they can get brought in on the truck out here. That's not a lot. I can go through that watering my garden because my garden is huge for vegetables and fruit trees and all that um, in one day. So <laughs> that's not a good solution for us when there's not enough rain. Now, when I bought this property, the well you see behind me here, it was already there. So that saved a lot of my costs because then I didn't have to dig the well. And that's the most expensive part of the system by far. And again, I'll go through all those costs here in a second. So my off-grid water system consists of a well right here that goes down 442 feet into the ground because our groundwater here is very deep. We're in Texas. Um, and then it brings that water up and it takes it directly underground right here and comes up this little water pipe right here. And I'll be quiet here. You can see, you can hear the well running right now and it drops on the top of these tanks. So I'll be quiet for a sec. Not sure if you can hear that water running, um, but basically it fills up this tank. And then since these tanks are connected at the bottom, each of the three, they all rise and fall together at the same time. And I have a float switch up there that is ran. It's got an electrical line here in this uh, PVC that goes back to my well pump. So once this float gets triggered after the water goes down, uh, these are 3,000 gallon tanks. I think once it gets down to about the 2,000 gallon level here, it tells my well to turn on. And that means 2,000 gallons here, here, and here. So it basically runs down 6,000 gallons and then pumps 6,000 gallons back in. Um, and that is not actually uh, very good on your well pump because um, it could heat up if you run into sucking too much water at one time. But that is also why we have this little box here installed, which is called a pump saver. And you can see the green light. I'm not sure you can see the green light in there, um, but I can see it on. Um, when it's green, that means it's good, everything's running fine, but if for some reason the pump was starting to suck in water, or not water, dirt, from running too much, it would turn off automatically. So this uh, pump saver can recognize that. So critical to have one of these because the pump on this thing is down 400 feet in the ground. So to swap out that pump, if it got burned up, it would be around a three to $4,000 job. Not something we want to deal with. So the more, uh, things you could put on here to protect it, the better. So, so after the water gets pumped into these tanks, it goes down, it comes out of this spigot right here into the ground and runs into the ground and goes actually back here to this big pump right here. Now this is a pressure pump that pressurizes our whole system and it is a variable speed pump which is great on electrical usage because it only uses, it kind of spins low for a while. And then if everyone's using water at the same time, the reason I say everyone is because I have five properties, on my little family homestead here. So I have different family members living in houses on our 15 acres. And this system pumps all of it. 
and I power all of the electrical components through my off-grid solar system at my house, which I'll get into here as well. But this is, this pressurized the system. So originally, this big bladder tank right here, it's really old. It's not really needed now. But it was originally when I bought the house, it had this bladder tank and this well, which I already went over, and it powered a house that you see right behind me. That is it when I bought the property. So, and the well only ran when it needed to pressurize this little tank to send water to one house. Now that we have five houses on here, we had to have this big old beast. Um, and I'll go through the cost of all of this here at the end of the video. So then it goes from this little tank here and we have all the pipes kind of covered up just in blankets. We're going to build a whole pump house over the top of all of this so we can house it all. But right now we're just trying to protect it from uh, the sun. It's 102 degrees right now here in Texas. Um, but basically it goes into this pipe right here and down that little valve right there, that inch and a quarter line goes to this home. And that runs water to that home and then it keeps going also, it tees off through this goes into the ground and then runs all the way out down a trail uh, about 400 feet to another three houses we have down that area. And also there's a spigot right here that runs in the ground that runs out that direction. And then there's another house about 500 feet away, way down past those trees down there. So this system powers all of those houses. And these are just basically this is an electrical box um, to power it where the electrical line comes from my house about 400 feet away, runs into here to feed this, feed this box, and that feeds the pump, the well pump down on the ground over here. It also feeds um, this high pressure system pump down here. So this EMP shield here basically is, uh, I mean, it is what it says it is. It, uh, it's a shield from an EMP uh, blast, lightning strike. Basically what it does is it, it plugs right into, uh, let's see right here, EMP shield. So one and two which is this one and this one here. That is my EMP shield. It plugs right into, right on your panel here. So it's got its own breaker, these two 20s here. And if there's lightning strike, it'll literally take that energy and send it to ground quickly before it can do any damage to any electrical components. So my pump is safe. Um, this pump is safe. My well pump is safe, um, which is pretty critical infrastructure for us out here because we didn't have this well. We are in uh, deep trouble. Um, so this panel, controls that well pump and this pressure pump and the water you're probably wondering um, i use two inch lines that go down to the ground that go out to three houses down there um, and that is plenty of pressure for us we have a ton of water pressure with those two inch lines and it is kind of flowing downhill too so i guess that probably helps but the plumber that i used said it pretty much didn't matter this pump we have here will pressurize anything so Okay, so let's get into the cost of this system. So each one of these tanks, I got used for $1,000 each. So there's 3,000 in the tanks. And if you look hard enough, you can find them for about, uh, oh, maybe not 1,000, but maybe 1,500. I got a hell of a deal on these. But if you look hard, you can find about 50 cents a gallon um, in storage tanks. Um, this pressure pump right here cost me, with the plumber to install it, was about 3,000, a little over 30, I think it was $3,500 for that pressure pump for the whole system, which is a heck of a deal because a well company was gonna charge me 7,000 for the exact same thing. So shop around if you're looking for that. Um, the well, to dig a well 450 feet deep like this out here in Texas, it runs about $30,000 for that and a bladder tank like this. Um, and then you've got the PVC lines that run all the way down to the house. I think I spent about 600 on just the two inch PVC it goes all the way down the valves i have to break off at each of the houses um, but i did all that install myself i dug the trench myself with a rock saw um, which was about a thousand dollars to rent the rock saw for the weekend and those are really the only costs for the system um, i only had to buy the tanks hook those up i poured this pad myself um, had a concrete truck in i formed it though to make it a lot cheaper so it was only about a thousand dollars for the concrete pad um, and that's pretty much the total cost of the system now, what makes it off-grid is because I power it with my off-grid solar system, which I'll go give you a glimpse of right now as well. So here is a picture of my off-grid solar system that I have here. I use the Solark 15K. Oh, and also I forgot to mention while I was outside was if you guys are interested in getting an EMP shield to protect your critical equipment, I have one on my home uh, electrical panel you can put right on there that protects all your electrical equipment inside your house. Um, you can get them for your, your solar system as well, which I do have as also. 
Um, but if you want to get that, I'll have a discount code in the description. They can take 50 bucks off each one that you buy since I am an affiliate of theirs. Um, all right, so I'm moving on to the solar system. This is what makes my water system off grid because it's powered by this system, which is completely powered by my 15,000 uh, watt solar array that I have out front of my house, ground mount, and these EG4LL lithium batteries. The total of 30 kilowatts of battery storage here. 30 kilowatt hours, excuse me. And this is a Solar 15K that how it basically works is you can see here, uh, so I can see, get rid of the glare. There you go. So my solar panels are bringing in 9.92 kilowatts right now. So basically 10,000 watts. I'm not using anything from the grid. It says 0 0.01 because it does uh, maintain a communication with the grid because I do have it as backup to use in case uh, I don't have enough battery storage. And you can see my house is using a ton of power right now because my well was running. I've got my whole house air conditioning running. I've got our pressure pump running. I've got a water distiller running. I've got so much. You know, normally I use about four to 5,000 uh, kilowatt, uh, sorry, four to five kilowatts uh, in an hour here that you'll see on this screen. So um, right now I'm using a ton of power, which isn't normal, but you can see my solar panels are not quite bringing in enough to cover it. So my batteries are making up the difference by 3.44 kilowatts. So I'm bringing a little bit out of my batteries right now. And as soon as that well shuts off um, and I've got another window air conditioning unit running behind me, plus my four ton AC as well for my whole house running because it's 102 degrees today, ridiculously hot here in Texas right now. Um, but that'll drop down here shortly. And I'll start charging the batteries again. Right now they're at 70%. And I have this thing set to where it will stay on battery and solar panels only um, and not use the grid unless the batteries get to a 20% state of charge. Then it'll automatically flip over and the grid will supplement. It'll take the solar panel power first and the grid will add whatever it needs to to help make up the difference to keep my house running um, like normal. So that is how this Solarc 15K inverter, which is by far, in my opinion, the best inverter out there if you want to do a whole house style system. Um, and I'll have actually a wire uh, wiring diagram uh, with pictures kind of showing how my whole system is set up, how it's wired. Um, and basically it comes from the grid outside where the meter is. It comes to right here, which is just a, a disconnect where I can completely go off grid if I pull that switch down. Um, and then it feeds from there into my solar arc. And then from my solar converter, it goes to my 200 amp electrical panel in the next room over here that feeds my entire panel, not a critical loads panel, my entire house can run off it, which I love. And this thing can run off grid to the tune of 12,000 watts at one time in off grid mode. Um, and you can see right now, I'm not even, now I'm only using eight kilowatts and I'm charging my batteries now by 1.22. As you can see that well pump just turned off and probably another um, big electrical draw that my wife was running in the kitchen just turned off as well. Um, so this thing can run off grid 12,000 watts, but on grid it can do it's got a pass through where even when I'm using solar right now, it'll still push all the way your full 200 amp panel on it. Um, but when you're in off grid mode, if I pulled this lever down, the max I can do is 12,000 uh, watts at a time, basically 6,000 on each 120 volt leg of this system. Um, but again, download that. It's a free diagram um, in the description that you can see exactly how this system is uh, wired up. And basically I've got links to every part that I use for the install as well, down to these conduits, down to these connectors down here. I mean, everything, the exact batteries I use for my off-grid system here to run at night when there's no sun, um, everything. So yeah, check that out. That is why my system is off-grid. I've got uh, water whenever I want, regardless if the power goes down. And that is a, it's a good feeling to have. Trust me guys, especially with all the sh power outages we've been having here in the state of Texas. So I've got power no matter what happens barring the sun burning out, which uh, if that happens, we got a lot bigger problems <laughs> and not having enough power. Uh, but any anyway, guys, uh, subscribe to this channel because I'm trying to show you guys how to live as self-sufficient of a life as possible. Uh, make sure you subscribe and check it out. Thanks, everyone.